Coming up with fires burning out west and hurricanes hitting the south, this year has been one for the record books. Our own Al Roker will explain what all this wild weather means. Then, missing those hugs from Grandma? Is there a safe way to give real hugs? Dr. Torres will weigh in and even show you how you may be able to give some hugs safely. Plus, we'll check in with one of the newest members of the Houston Zoo. And these two best friends from London are raising money to help kids in another country. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's always great to be with you. We've got a jam-packed show today with lots of interesting and fun stuff coming up, including these two six-year-old boys from London. I love these kids. They set up a lemonade stand to raise money for kids in Yemen, and they caught the attention of a big movie star. We're going to explain that one to you. But first, let's turn to the weather and what's been in the news lately. Some parts of the country are really going through difficult times right now. We've been watching the fires burn in Oregon and California. They've caused a lot of destruction, and some people have had to evacuate their homes for safety. And the smoke can really be seen virtually everywhere now. And in the southern part of the country, it's been an active hurricane season. Did you know a hurricane is when a tropical storm's maximum sustained winds reach 74 miles per hour or higher. Hurricane season is usually from June 1st to November 30th. However, these storms can also occur before or after the official season. Here to help you understand what's going on is our friend Al Roker. 2020 has been one for the record books with raging wildfires in the West and a record number of hurricanes hitting the U.S. It's true that these happen every year but not to this extreme. Why? Climate change. Our warming planet is fueling the rapid intensification of hurricanes, making them more dangerous and causing severe droughts and floods. And in the West, where millions of acres are burning, what's known as extreme wildfire behavior has become normal. The actual flames aren't the only risk associated with these fires. The smoke-filled air is incredibly toxic, making people potentially sick. How is climate change making these conditions worse? Well, in California, the summers are hotter and drier. The brutal heat waves, like the one that happened just a few weeks ago, are becoming all too frequent. And all this leads to the extreme fire weather. But remember, you and I can help change this pattern. Get educated about what's happening. Get involved in your community. And together, we can make a difference. Al Roker, thanks very much. I know you guys in the weather office are awfully busy these days. Let's turn now to the coronavirus, a story that continues to be in the news headlines, and your questions keep coming in. Here to answer some of them is our pal, Dr. John Torres. Dr. John, our first question today comes from Wisconsin. Hi, Lester. My name is Harlow Grossman Daly. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm 11 years old. And my question is, if someone coughs on me in an open cut that I have, can their germs of coronavirus get in and infect me? Thank you. And what do you think, Dr. John? You know, this is an interesting question. And it definitely makes you think about how you get coronavirus. It's a respiratory virus. So you get it by getting into your lungs, through your mouth, through your nose, or possibly even getting into your eyes. You can get coronavirus that way. But you typically can't get it from a cut because it's not a bloodborne virus. But one thing you have to be careful of, if somebody is that close to you that they're coughing into a cut, then they're inside your social circle. So you want to be careful and make sure that you're wearing a mask. They should be wearing a mask as well. And that's the best way to protect yourself and protect them. Yeah, very good point. Thanks. Our next question comes from Virginia. Hi, Mr. Lester Holt and Dr. John Torres. My name is Ara, and I'm from Brambleton, Virginia. My question is, if I know my, my extended family is quarantining and tested negative, is there a safe way to give real hugs? Oh, boy, that's one I think a lot of us have thought about. We could use a lot of hugs right now, Dr. John, but we're worried. So what's your answer? Boy, 
we definitely do miss the hugs. And if you do give a hug, number one, if it's somebody outside your household, then that increases the risk of getting coronavirus. But if you're doing it very quickly, there are ways to minimize your risk and make it a little bit safer. Number one, you want to make sure everybody's wearing a mask. That's important. But when you are hugging, the other thing you can do is hold your breath with a quick hug. Make sure you're turned away. And I'm using East here as an example. Make sure your face and their face are turned away from each other. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is if you're shorter than they are, as if if it's your grandparents or your parents, you can hug them around the waist. That helps too. And then the third way you can do it is you can simply hug them from behind and make sure maybe even a little kiss on the head and get away from them as quick as you can. Again, short hugs, both wearing masks. You can minimize the chances of spreading or catching coronavirus that way. Yeah, it's so awkward sometimes what to do socially. You can't shake, you can't hug, but Dr. John, appreciate that important exactly. advice. Thank you as always. You bet. All right, now let's switch gears and head to Houston, where a rare okapi was just born over the summer at the Houston Zoo. Joining us now is John Register, assistant curator at the Houston Zoo. And John, I know you're there with the mom, but before we even get go too far, what exactly is an okapi? Sure, Lester, thank you. An okapi is a mammal that comes from Central Africa in, some, in a place called the Aturi Forest, and that's in the Democratic Republic of Congo. If you can see her right now, uh, she is her own species. And Okapi is a, the closest living relative to a giraffe. And if you look at the Okapi's head and sort of the structure of their body, you will see a similarity between the two. I'll tell you, I'm also seeing a little similarity with a zebra. Were those stripes I saw on her legs? <laughs> She definitely has very interesting camouflage markings on her body. So where Okapi come from is a very dense rainforest. And as the light filters through that tree canopy, it gets broken up by the time it hits the ground. And so this markings on her body allows her to camouflage within that system. And so that is why she has these interesting markings. Yeah, I, I assume the, the new baby is somewhere in that compound. Can you, can you point her out? Certainly. So she is a little, she's hiding from us a little bit, but she's in the back up against the wall and just hiding behind the bamboo. She may come out here in just a minute for us. And her name is Kavuli. I understand you had a contest to name her. That name means shadow in Swahili, correct? We did. We had an online contest that helped raise funds for the Houston Zoo, and that is the name that we voted on, and Kavuli is the winner. And by the way, I keep saying a she. It's a, it's a male or female, the baby? It is a female, and this is Sukari's first time she's had a calf, so she's doing amazingly well with her first baby. And how is she doing with uh, visitors at the zoo? Can people come and, and see her through the fence? You absolutely can. Our Kavuli and Sukari, her mom, are available every day at the Houston Zoo. So if you come to the zoo, you'll definitely see these Okapi on exhibit. That's pretty awesome. John Register, thank you for taking time and introducing us to the new mom and the new baby. And uh, I, I, I'm envious of folks that will get to stop by and take a look for, with their own eyes. But thank you for joining us. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Finally, we turn to our Inspiring Kids series, where we take you overseas this time to meet a pair of best friends from London, whose recipe for success is helping others. Here's Roth Sanchez. Six-year-olds Ayan and Mikhail have been best friends their whole lives. They do everything together, from watching movies to playing soccer. But this year, their parents told them about some children who aren't so lucky. In the Middle Eastern country of Yemen, a terrible war is raging. Millions of children don't have enough to eat. From their home in London, the boys decided to help. They set up a lemonade stand and got squeezing. Each little golden cup, a small way to help kids their age in a faraway country. They have no food, no water, no medicine. And we have loads of things like toys, water, food, all the simple things you need to survive in life. The boys started selling lemonade to friends, family and neighbors. 
they soon raised thousands of dollars with the help of a catchy slogan. Lemonade for lemonade. Come and get your lemonade! The boys didn't know it, but they caught the attention of an unexpected figure. Angelina Jolie is best known for Hollywood movies like Tomb Raider or Maleficent. But she also works with the United Nations, helping refugee families around the world. Jolie heard about their work on Yemen and sent a generous donation and a personal note. They replied on Instagram with an invitation to come visit. Thank you for donating to our cause. If you ever come to London, feel free to buy a fresh bottle of lemonade. Their drink may be world famous, but they aren't sharing the recipe. Oh, delicious. Thank you. Not too sweet, not too sour. What's the recipe? If I tell you, I'm going to tell you. It's a secret? It's just like the secret of Coca-Cola. They've now raised around $100,000 for kids in Yemen. And their parents still can't believe their little lemonade stand won praise from Angelina Jolie. It's mind-blowing. I mean, she's such a humanitarian in her own right. So to get recognition from somebody with that kind of a platform and that level of fame, to recognize what two six-year-old boys in London are doing, it's just incredible, and we're really grateful for it. For these best friends, as long as life keeps giving them opportunities to help others, they'll keep on making lemonade. Come on, get your lemonade! Raph Sanchez, NBC News, London. That's such a great story. Big kudos to you boys for what you're doing. I also love those dance moves. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question, send a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. As usual, take care of yourself and each other.